so uh, the Halo 5 Guardians multiplayer beta goes live on December 29th through January 18th for three weeks. And during that time, we're going to have seven maps and three different modes. And each week, there'll be new maps and modes that rotate in for fans to enjoy. And then in weeks two and three, there are going to be a couple of pieces of content that we're going to ask fans to go online and vote on to see uh, what they would like to see appear in the beta for those weeks. This is the earliest we've ever done a beta for a Halo game. This is uh, almost a year from launch of the title. Um, and for this beta, we've really selected the 4v4 arena experience as the focus of, of the beta. Um, and there's a reason for that. Uh, we're coming out as part of the Master Chief Collection. This is the 10 year uh, anniversary of Halo 2. So this is really a celebration of Halo's arena legacy. Um, and uh, so while we're going to focus on that 4v4 mode within the beta, uh, keep in mind that's just one part of the larger uh, multiplayer experience for Halo 5 Guardians. Uh, so one of the, the big focuses for the beta, since this is on 4v4 Arena, uh, a pillar of that experience is competitive. And part of making uh, a great competitive game is making sure that everyone is uh, on even footing, uh, level playing field, so they're coming into the match with the same weapons, and everyone has the same suite of consistent Spartan abilities that they can all take advantage of on the battlefield. So we've replaced armor abilities with these new Spartan abilities, um, and these are things like uh, Spartan Charge, Ground Pound, uh, the ability to clamber, uh, thrusters, uh, and stabilizers. And all of these come together in combination with our map designs um, to provide you know, one consistent experience for all players that are competing on the battlefield. So what was the reason for this? Was this looking back at past Halos and thinking, because obviously Halo 2, was that the last time that you had the level playing field, three and four, had armor abilities, right? No, yeah, so you had uh, three, three was a level playing field. In Reach, there was the introduction of armor, armor abilities and set loadouts. And then in Halo 4, we gave uh, users the ability to customize loadouts and unlock things as they progress through their career. Um, because this is focused on 4v4 Arena and it's a competitive focused experience, it's really important to us that, that all players had the same abilities. So things were really in balance. Um, and then there's no way for, you know, if you go into the, into the match, you, you're not having to worry about does this player have, um, you know, invisibility? Do they have a jetpack or something like that? You know that all players can pull off the same set of moves. Um, they're all hopefully in balance with one another, um, and everyone's got the same opportunity to succeed. What's the reason, well, part of the reason for that, the eSports, because obviously eSports, it's, it has to be level playing field. Was that one of the, the reasons behind it? Yeah, I think if you look at the growth of eSports over the last three years, it's been really exciting to watch that. Um, and Halo is an experience that's just tailor-made for eSports. You've got um, a, a shooting experience that's unlike any other shooter out there where there's a move, counter move, almost a, a chess-like quality to it where uh, we call it the, the, the dance, you know, the halo dance when um, it's not something where you're coming around a corner shooting someone once and, and, and then uh, that's the end of the engagement. You have a back and forth and as a, a player you have the ability to respond to whatever your opponent is throwing at you and, and you can turn things around and best him. And I think that's one of the things that uh, we love most about the Halo experience. So you're showing off three maps here today. Uh, the two main ones are, I want to say Truth and Empire, yeah. right? So Truth is obviously inspired by the classic midship map. I mean, is that how you approach map design? Do you kind of look at classic Halo maps and think, we can kind of bring it forward into, into today kind of thing? Or do you just, do you pick a few and then do a blank slate on others? I mean, what's the process? I, I think across our team, there's a, a lot of love and respect for some of the maps that have come before uh, in Halo. And um, there's a history in the Halo franchise of, of taking classic maps and sort of reinventing them and bringing them forward. And uh, Truth is an example of that, where we've taken a classic map in midship and we've kind of evolved it to take advantage of a lot of the new abilities that are part of Halo 5 Guardians. Um, so you've got clamber routes that are built into the map. Um, you've got a lot of changes that are set up to take advantage of those things. Um, but we also have new maps like Empire, which is a map that we showed off here today. Um, and those are tailor-made um, for Halo 5 Guardians. And again, the process that we go through there is uh, a lot of times we're just inspired by um, a setting or an idea and then uh, maybe a layout um, that the team gets excited about. And then we just iterate throughout that process to make sure that we're building the map to take advantage of, of the core gameplay that we've built. 
de-scoping is back. That will delight some people and annoy others. Uh, what was the reason for that? So de-scoping is a really critical balance feature um, in Halo multiplayer. And with Halo 4, we introduced a flinch system. Um, I think one of the, the really uh, you know, side effects of that that, that people um, complained a bit about in the competitive uh, set was the fact that uh, you know, there's a randomness to it. When, when you get shot, you don't know where your reticle is going to go. Um, de-scoping does two things. One is it allows the reticle to remain on your target so that even when you're being shot, and you're being pushed out of, out of scope, um, you can still maintain uh, your target and you can make that shot if you're skilled enough to pull it off. Um, so that was really important. Uh, Descoping really uh, gives you the ability to push a sniper or someone who's, who's uh, fighting from range with something like a BR or a DMR. Um, you can then descope them and, and sort of force them um, to, to uh, to reconsider and are they going to go back into scope or not. Um, it allows us to balance against uh, an overpowering weapon like the sniper rifle, which in the hands of a talented sniper can just lock down the map. Um, so that's, it's a, a mechanic that I, I think has been in Halo for years. It's something that, that is uh, kind of signature to Halo and it's something we wanted to bring back as a team. There are a few rewards, right, for, tied into the Master Chief Collection and Halo 5, the, the beta. Can you just talk a bit about those and how people will unlo unlock them? Yeah, so within the beta, we're, we're featuring an XP-based progression system in which uh, players can unlock a number of cosmetic awards, um, things like uh, armor sets, helmets, visors, that allow them to customize um, the way that their Spartans look on the battlefield. Um, we have a few special unlocks as well that tie into the Master Chief Collection. So as you complete uh, achievements within the Master Chief Collection, uh, there are some tie-ins that give you exclusive armor sets that you can then use in the beta. Um, we also have a couple of unlocks that tie into Nightfall, which is uh, the new live action series that launches as part of the Master Chief Collection. And so if you watch Nightfall on the Halo channel, um, you'll have things that unlock within the game. Uh, and then all of those special unlocks um, will then carry forward into the main game uh, when it launches next year. Have you settled on things like caps yet? Or is that still being worked on? What level cap you can have in the beta? Uh, so for the beta, I, you know what? I don't actually know offhand what the level cap is. We do have a level cap in mind, um, but uh, that's, that's sort of testing our, our XP-based leveling system. Um, the other thing that we have for progression within the beta is focused on skill. Um, we have a CSR or competitive skill rating system that we've integrated into the game and we've completely overhauled it for Halo 5 Guardians. Um, it's now a seven tier system so players can go through iron, bronze, silver, gold, uh, semi-pro and pro and they uh, will see their skill um, appreciate or decline based on their performance. They can compare their skill against their friends and against the other people that they're facing online. And I missed Onyx. Onyx. Yeah. <laughs> so the last time you did that, if I'm right in thinking, was actually Halo 2. Halo 2 was the la uh, no Halo 3 was the last one to have a, a, a rating system that was displayed um, within the game. Yeah. Uh, where did that come from? I mean, is that something the fans have been asking for? Because uh, Reach 4. I mean, you could you basically just earn XP no matter what yeah. you did, rather than losing. I, and does that really help with like matchmaking and stuff like that? Does that? So yeah, matchmaking has always taken into account uh, player skill. It's just a question of you know whether that's reflected um, to the players as as they're playing the game. Um, yeah, it's something that. Um, with Halo 4, you had XP-based progression. Um, you also had a CSR uh, rating. It was a little bit different than the one that we've put into Halo 5 Guardians, um, but that was only available to view uh, on the website. So now you can actually see it within the game, uh, and that's something that fans have been asking for. They, they really uh, want to be able to see their skill improve as they play the game, and they want to be able to compare themselves against the other players that they're playing and see how they stack up. And have you decided yet whether stats and stuff are going to carry over or is it just going to be a blank slate? Yeah, so for the, uh, for the multiplayer beta, we won't be carrying those stats forward to the launch of the game. This beta is really about testing the new gameplay systems and balance tuning. Um, and, but, you know, when we get to the, the launch of the game next year, we'll be wiping the slate clean with regards to uh, progression as well as uh, stats.
So this more so than possibly any other beta because it's so far away from launch. It, it's, feedback's important, right? I mean, you're gonna take on board what everybody says and obviously decide whether it, it fits the game. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is a beta that's really about putting the game in the hands of fans, getting feedback, and having the time within the remaining development cycle to, to really react to that feedback. I think a lot of times when you see a beta come out um, for games, they're, they're coming out so close to launch that it's really about testing the services for the game, but there's not really that opportunity to react to the feedback that fans might have. And being a year out from release, um, you know, that, that gives us enough time within development to really take on some of, some of the feedback um, that emerges as part of the beta. A lot of publishers and developers seem to use betas as almost like, I don't want to say this, but glorified demos to get people hyped for the game. Are you concerned that if people are really excited to play it and really enjoy themselves over kind of December and January, that come the holiday 2015, when you actually ship, that they might, I don't want to say they'll forget about it, but that kind of excitement level will have kind of dwindled somewhat? Well, I, you know, I, obviously we're, we're hoping that the beta is going to be a really exciting experience for people um, when they get hands-on with the game and check out the arena multiplayer experience. We have a lot more game that we're still going to be talking about between now and launch. Um, we're not showing the rest of our multiplayer experience. We're not talking about our new campaign experience and, and the new story. So I think there's still going to be a lot of, of information that we're going to be able to um, you know, reveal to fans as we go through the next year and get ready for launch um, that hopefully will get people excited to play Halo 5 Guardians. Is there another way into the beta apart from the Master Chief Collection or is it just the Master Chief Collection? Yeah, at this point, the, the only way to get into the beta is the Master Chief Collection. We really want people to have the ability to experience Halo 5 uh, multiplayer, the future of Halo's multiplayer, in context with kind of the legacy of, of the last decade plus. Yeah, so the Halo 5 Guardians multiplayer beta launches on December 29th, runs for three weeks through January 18th, and if you want to get uh, online and be a part of it, you just need to pick up the Master Chief Collection. Everyone who buys the Master Chief Collection automatically gets entry into the beta.